The story you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring historical characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Kenneth Bianchi, known as the Hillside Strangler, is a serial killer best known for working with his cousin, Angelo Bono, to commit 15 rapes and murders. Kenneth Alicio Bianchi was born on May 22, 1951 in Rochester, New York. Bianchi, whose natural mother was an alcoholic prostitute, was adopted at birth and had a love-hate relationship with women, even as a young child. Bianchi was deeply troubled from a young age, and his adoptive mother described him as being a compulsive liar who had risen from the cradle dissembling. He often worried her with his penchant for trance-like daydreams. Despite having above-average intelligence, he was an underachiever who was quick to lose his temper. He was diagnosed with petite mal seizures when he was 5 years old and passive-aggressive disorder when he was 10. Bianchi was briefly married not long after he graduated, but it only lasted several months before his wife left him. He enrolled in college but only managed one semester before dropping out. From there, he drifted from job to job until he landed work at a jewelry store as a security guard. This job enabled him to steal, and his girlfriends in the prostitutes he frequented were often the recipients of the valuables. In 1977, Bianchi moved to Los Angeles and began spending a lot of his time with his cousin, Angelo Bono. Bono was a lot older than Bianchi and the younger man was impressed by the clothes and jewelry his cousin wore and his ability to date many women. They decided to work as pimps together but this was only the beginning of what was yet to come. Like Bianchi, Angelo Bono was also born in Rochester, New York. His parents were first-generation immigrants from Italy. They would eventually divorce and Bono moved to Glendale, California with his mother. From a young age, Bono developed a loathing towards women, though it is unknown why. And despite this, he later married several women and sired numerous children, all of whom he abused at least physically and sometimes sexually. In 1975, Bono had a successful auto upholstery business and he used this to help him lure young girls so he could rape them. When his cousin Bianchi turned up on his doorstep, they quickly discovered that they had similar fantasies about raping and murdering women. Before long, Bianchi and Bono teamed up for a spree of kidnappings, rapes, and murders that claimed 10 victims, mostly in and around Los Angeles between October 1977 and February 1978. Posing as policemen, the cousins began with prostitutes, eventually moving on to middle-class girls and women. They usually left the bodies on the hillsides of the Glendale Highland Park area, earning the moniker, the Hillside Strangler. During the four-month rampage, both men would sexually abuse their victims before strangling them. They inflicted unspeakable horrors on their victims, and their victims were subjected to vile and sadistic tortures, including electric shocks, injections with chemicals, and poisoning with carbon monoxide gas. While Bianchi and Bono were picking women up and murdering them, Bianchi applied for a job with the Los Angeles Police Department and had even been taken for several rides with police officers while they were searching for the Hillside Strangler. One evening, after they had already successfully murdered 10 women, Bianchi told Bono about the ride along he had been on with the police and how he was actually being questioned about the murdered women. An argument ensued at one point and Bono was so furious that he told Bianchi that if he didn't move to Bellingham, he would kill him. So Bianchi moved to Bellingham in 1978. In Bellingham, on January 11, 1979, Bianchi was working as a security guard and he lured two young students, both of whom were female, to a house he was meant to be guarding. The women were 22-year-old Karen Mandick and 27-year-old Diane Wilder and were students at Western Washington University. He made the first woman go down the stairs where he promptly strangled her and then he repeated the process with the second victim. Without help from his partner, he left many clues and police apprehended him the next day. 
a California driver's license, and a routine background check linked him to the addresses of two Hillside Strangler victims. Following his arrest, Bianchi admitted he and Bono, in 1977, while posing as police officers, stopped a young female by the name of Catherine Laurie with the intentions of abducting and killing her. But after learning she was the daughter of actor Peter Laurie, they let her go. Only after he was arrested did Catherine learn of the true identity of the man whom she encountered. Now he had alerted the police to Bono's involvement. Bono was arrested based on Bianchi's confessions and their trials for the murders were set. Bianchi pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, trying to convince the authorities that he had another personality. He claimed this personality, Steve Walker, was the one who had committed the murders. Initially, psychiatric assessments led to the conclusion that he was indeed suffering from a multiple personality disorder. However, the investigators brought in another psychiatrist to assess Bianchi and he came up with a different opinion. While talking to Bianchi, he told him that people with multiple personality disorder usually have three or more personalities. Immediately, Bianchi created another personality and his ruse was blown. When confronted, he admitted he had faked it all. He was, however, diagnosed later with antisocial personality disorder. Eventually, investigators discovered that the very name Stephen Walker came from a student whose identity Bianchi had previously attempted to steal for the purpose of fraudulently practicing psychology. Police also found a small library of books in Bianchi's home on topics of modern psychology, further indicating his ability to fake the disorder. During his trial, the defense team brought forward Veronica Compton, who Bianchi had started a relationship with while he was in prison. She lied telling a false story about the crimes in an effort to show Bianchi was innocent. At one point, she admitted she wanted to buy a mortuary along with another convicted murderer so they could indulge in necrophilia. Compton even went so far as to try and strangle a woman in a motel room to try and make authorities think the hillside strangler was still out on the loose. She had been given some semen by Bianchi to plant on the victim. To make matters irreparably worse, Veronica sent a letter and tape to the Bellingham authorities telling them that they had arrested an innocent man and pointed to the recent strangling attempt to prove that the real culprit was still at large. But all her attempts failed and the woman survived, and she herself ended up being convicted and imprisoned for attempted murder. To try and make his sentence more lenient, Bianchi agreed to testify against his cousin Bono. But when it came time to testify, he made the whole process as difficult as possible, contradicting himself and being downright uncooperative. He was convicted of the murders and received a life sentence. Bono's trial became one of the longest in legal history in the U.S. and ran from November 1981 to November 1983. Despite Bianchi's efforts to try and use his incoherent testimony to help Bono get off the charges or at least get a lighter sentence, Bono was convicted of committing nine murders. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Bianchi was a Louisiana pen pal in September 1989 in a prison chapel ceremony. He was eligible for parole in 2010, but it was denied on August 18. He can apply for parole again in 2025. Angelo Bono was sent to Folsom Prison, where he stayed in his cell fearing injury from other inmates. On September 21, 2002, Bono was found deceased in his cell, having suffered from a fatal heart attack. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.